Okay, so this is a, another topic um, that leads us into our uh, probability unit. Uh, it's, it's our last of our counting principles, and we're, we're actually looking at uh, a pattern that exists uh, in our probability unit and our probability distributions unit, uh, and it's called the binomial theorem. Uh, just a bit of a recall in connection with Pascal's triangle, we see uh, the, the, coefficient, the, the, the uh, combinations, uh, 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3, correspond with row 3 of Pascal's triangle, 1, 3, 3, 1. And then 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, 4 choose 4, again correspond with row 4 of uh, Pascal's triangle, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And of course Pascal's triangle is derived from all of these different combinations and that would be a row in Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle in the end looks like this where n is the row and r is the column. And the column strangely enough sort of goes diagonally. It's not like a column that you would see uh, architecturally or something like that. It's kind of a diagonal column but either way it's sort of a two-dimensional structure uh, when you look at that. Okay, um, one thing that is kind of important for us to know um, and notice, there's many patterns that go along with these combinations, but one pattern that's of specific importance is, is that uh, it's palindromic, which means that uh, for every choose on one side of a particular um, uh, row of Pascal's triangle, there's going to be a partner for it somewhere else, unless it's the very, very center one, like for example here, 6 choose 3 is unique, but 6 choose 2 and 6 choose 4 are the same number, 6 choose 1 and 6 choose 5 are the same number, and 6 choose 0 and 6 choose 6 are the same number. Okay, right here we have 7 choose 3 and 7 choose 4 that are the same number. And that of course creates Pascal's method, uh, a, a situation that goes along with that where we take uh, this choose and this choose and it adds together to give us this choose. So just a little bit of review from our uh, Pascal's triangle. I'll maybe go back over that uh, again because we are going to be using the numbers for Pascal's triangle to correspond with the chooses in our formula today. Okay? So uh, just having a quick peek at things. All right. Um, we have uh, this sort of progression that helps us understand how the binomial theorem works and what it and how and and what, what it looks like. So uh, if I was to take this binomial, it's a binomial because it has one term and two terms. Okay, bracket it to the power of zero and raise it to any power. Okay, that's what the binomial theorem is designed to do. Now this is designed to emulate repeated trials with two outcomes, success and fail. But we're not going to look at that. We're just going to look at it algebraically here. Look at the patterns that is, exist algebraically, and then apply it later on when we learn about probabilities. Okay. So uh, x plus y to the zero. What's that? Well, that's one to the zero. Okay, or just one. I shouldn't say one to the zero. That's just one. Okay. Because anything to the power of zero, if you remember, is one. X plus y to the one is going to be one x plus 1y. And you may be like, that's weird. Why are you doing the 1 in front of the x? Trust me. Okay. For the next one, and a lot of people make mistakes when they do this expansion, especially if your algebra is not too good, but I'm expanding x plus y squared. That's x plus y times x plus y. And what we end up with is 1x squared plus 2xy plus 1y squared. Okay, what's strange to go along with that is when you take that same binomial x plus y and you cube it, you get x cubed, 1x cubed, you get 3x squared y, you get 3xy squared, and finally you get 1y to the power of 4. And so we start to see some, sorry, the 3. So we start to see some interesting patterns that exist here. And the patterns that exist are... Well, first of all, the numbers, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. This is a 3, and those are the numbers. The coefficients are the numbers from row 3 of Pascal's triangle. Okay? And then for 2, it's row 2 of Pascal's triangle. For 1, it's row 1 of Pascal's triangle. So this is actually 3 choose 0. This is 3 choose 1. This is 3 choose 2. And this is 3 choose 3, which is great because we're trying to figure out a pattern and a formula that goes along with this is going to be useful. One other thing that you notice is we start with the power of x highest as it's going to be. It's sort of the same as this one, so x squared. And then it goes x, and then the x disappears. At the same time, there's no y, which is the second term. Then the y appears, and then the y goes to its highest power, y squared. Even better, you notice it here for x plus y cubed, that we have x cubed, x squared, x, and then the x is gone. And then we have no y, and then we have a y, y squared, y cubed. 
So let's take those patterns first of all. The first pattern is the numbers in Pascal's triangle. One, four, six, four, one. And I got that from Pascal's triangle. Now we use the pattern with the powers of x and the powers of y. So x, here it was cubed, x cubed. So we make that x to the four. And then we make that x to the 3, and x to the 2, and x to the 1. I won't put the 1 there. And then no x. And then we make it no y. Notice how there's, a, there's no y here. But then we make this y, and then y squared, and then y cubed. Oops, cubed. And then y to the power of 4. Okay, and it's something interesting to see with all the exponents. The power of all the exponents together here are 4. 1 and 3 is 4. 2 and 2 is 4. 3 and 1 is 4. And then 4. Okay, and then again, we see the numbers for Pascal's triangle. Now, if I wanted to do this a little bit more uh, without looking at Pascal's triangle, I know that this is going to be 5 choose 0. Okay, plus. This is going to be 5 choose 1, because it's row 5. Uh, this is going to be 5 choose 2. 5 choose 3. I'm going to run any room here. 5 choose 4. And then finally, 5 choose 5. I'm just going to have to kind of deep down into there. Okay, and then we look at again the x values. Sorry, the x values. That's going to be x to the power of 5, x to the 4, x to the 3, x to the 2, x to the 1, and then no x, and that's going to be no y, y to the 1, y squared, y cubed, y to the 4, and then finally y to the 5. Okay, and to look at the good copy version of that, I'm just going to quickly transform it into 1x to the 5. There's a 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 that we see for row 5. We see x to the 5, x to the 4, x to the 3, x to the 2, x to the 1, no x, no y, y, y squared, y cubed, y to the 4, y to the 5. And each term, of course, is separated by a plus sign because this is a plus sign. And again, we see the powers add up to 5. These two add up to 5, 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 and that's a 5. No coincidence. Okay? So in essence, what we're doing, when we're doing this formula, okay, when we're doing this pattern or this sequence or this thing of significance, is what we're doing is we're taking, um, when we have 6, Okay, as that value here, we're going to go 6 choose 0 plus 6 choose 1 plus 6 choose 2 plus 6 choose 3 plus 6 choose 4. I'm going to leave a little bit more, uh, and then I'm going to have to go plus 6 choose 5 plus 6 choose 6. Okay? That's the coefficients, that's the front number that's involved in there. Okay, so that is basically created by this simple expansion of x plus y. Now we have a minus in here, which is interesting. We also have a 2x, so that's gonna change a few things. But at least we know that the, the front number, okay, is at least gonna be in part because of uh, the, the numbers in Pascal's triangle. Now what we're gonna do is, remember, what we do is we take the first value here and then we raise it to the power of whatever this is. So this was x to the power of 5, so x to the power of 5. Here I'm going to take 2x, and I'm going to raise that to the power of 6. And here I'm going to take negative y, and I'm going to raise that to the power of actually 0. Now, most cases we just don't include it. Okay? And that's what we've been doing so far, but when we do the formula, it's going to be a little bit different. Again, so this is 2x, and notice we started at 6. Here we start at 5, and then we went to 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1. So if we start at 6, the next one's going to be 5. And then we're going to go 2x to the 4. And then we're going to go 2x to the 3. And then we're going to go 2x to the 2. And here we're going to go 2x to the 1. And then we could, I guess we could go 2x to the 0. Okay? And then here from the other end, remember we started with the highest power of the second guy, so this is negative y. And remember, see how this is, this, when this is 5, this is a 5, so we go, and this is a 6, this is a 6, and we go the second term, negative y to the 5, then we go negative y to the 4, we go negative y to the 3, negative y to the 2, 
negative y to the 1, and then I guess negative y to the 0. Okay? Noticing that the powers here all add up to 6, 6, 6. They're all adding up to that number 6. Okay? And then we have the part that makes Pascal's triangle as the coefficient component. And then we also have the first term. That starts at a high power and goes down to a lowest power, and then the last term starts at the lowest and zero and goes all the way up to the highest power. Okay, so that when I do this expansion, okay, and I'm going to do this slowly step by step, then I'm going to revert to the good copy version when we sum everything up. Okay, six choose zero is the number one. 2x to the power of 6. Now we have to remember back on how we do exponents. We remember back to doing exponents. Okay, so 2 to the power of 6 is going to be 64. x to the power of 6 is x to the power of 6. Nothing too crazy there. Negative y to the 0, anything to the 0 is just 1. And then we do the next term. So that's this guy. Then we're going to do that guy. 6 choose 1 is a 6. 2x to the 5. 2 to the 5 is 32, and then x to the 5 is x to the 5. And then negative y to the 1. Now that's a bracket negative y. A very common mistake that a lot of students make when they're doing this expansion is that they think this is a minus y. No, you're multiplying by a negative y. It's different. And now we're going to, so that's this one. Now we're going to do this one. 6 choose 2 is 15. Okay. 2x to the 4. 2 to the 4 is 16. x to the 4 is x to the 4. Nothing too crazy there. Negative y squared. Well, a negative squared is a positive. I'm not going to put a plus there. And then y squared is just y squared, or positive y squared. So that's this guy here. To do this guy, 6 choose 3 is 20. 2x cubed is 8x cubed. Negative y cubed, that's a negative, because a negative cubed is still a negative. And then y cubed is a y. Oh, sorry, cubed. And then we do the next, so that's this guy right here. Then we do the next term, 6 choose 4. 6 choose 4 is the same thing as 6 choose 2. Okay, but you know, 6 choose 4, you figure that out, it's 15. 2x squared, that's going to be a 4x squared and then negative y to the 4. Well, a negative to the power of 4 is going to be an, a positive. I'm not going to put a plus down there. And then y to the 4. Okay, now we still have some expanding and stuff to do, but we're really expanding this bracket, okay, to its sort of a fully expanded form. Now I'm going to do this term, that one there. Okay, 6 choose 5 is 6. And then 2x to the power of 1 is just 2x. Okay, negative y to the 5, a negative to the power of 5 is a negative. Okay, y to the 5 is y to the 5. Okay, and finally, 6, I mean, that's this one right here. 6 choose 6 is 1. 2x to the 0 is 1. Negative y to the 6 is going to be negative to the 6 is a positive. And then y to the 6. Then we simplify this, and I've got to kind of scrunch, so I'll show you a better looking version of this from our notes. Okay, this is 1 times 64 times 1 is 64x to the 6. So now we've figured out the full expansion. I know this was a really difficult one to do, but we figured out the full expansion when we did this. Here it's 6 times 32 times a negative 1. Oops, I put a plus there, so that should be a negative. Okay, a positive 6 times a 32 times a negative 1 is a negative. 6 times 32 is 2... 192? No. Yes, 192. X to the power of 5, and then Y. So notice this isn't a subtraction. It's a negative 1 times a 32 times a 6, which gives us a negative 192. Here we've got a 15 times a 16 times a 1. So that's going to be a positive. 15 times 16 is 240. And then we have x to the 4, y squared. Okay. Then here we have a 20 times an 8 times a negative. Okay, that's going to be negative 1, 60. I'm just going to put a little line here so we don't get sort of confused by the next line. 
So that's this one here, uh, uh, 15 times 16. And then it's, I'm sorry, um, 20 times 8 times negative 1 is negative 160. X cubed, Y cubed. And then we have a positive. We have 15 times 4 times 1. So that's a 60. And then x squared y to the 4. Now I don't have to go down another line here because I think I can fit this in over here and over here or there. 6 times 2 times a negative 1 is negative 12. x y to the 5. And then finally, a 1 times a 1 times a 1. It's a positive 1 y to the sixth, or I guess you could just make that a positive y to the sixth. Okay, and there is some form issues that are related in here. Okay, make sure all your exponents are positive. All right, and one thing is a pattern that you'll notice. The pattern is adds up to six, 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 adds up to six. Now we don't see the pattern in the Pascal's triangle. We did to start with, with the six choose one, six choose two, six choose three, six choose four, but it's this two that kind of made it a little bit more complicated of a scenario. So if you look at it in a good copy version, we'll start to see a few patterns as well. Okay, and the patterns that we see Okay, again, are the chooses, 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, 6 choose 4, 6 choose 5, 6 choose 6. So the patterns in Pascal's triangle. We see that we're raising the first one to the power of 6, and then 5, and then 4, and then 3, and then 2, and then 1, and then 0. And then the second one to the power of 0, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6. Okay, there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms, even though this is 6, because we go 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, 6 choose 4, 6 choose 5, 6 choose 6. So there's my 7. It's because of the 6 choose 0 that it really does that. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. And then what we have to do is a bunch of algebra to take this and turn it into the final term for the expansion. And that is a binomial expansion with a power of 6, which is a pretty long and involved question. Now, this is what it looks like in long form. So if I take a plus b to the n, it's going to be n choose 0. Whatever this is, is the choose that we start with. We always start with 0, then we go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, all the way till we get to the final n. Okay? And then here, it's going to be a to the power, so it's going to be a to the power of n, the highest power, and then it's going to go n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 0. And then the second guy is going to start at the power of 0, and it's going to go up 1 and 2, and all the way down to whatever the highest value would be. Okay? And so when we do a binomial expansion, this is sort of the process that we go through. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples uh, of, of how we can use this formula to help us see better how to do this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is there will be some that you'll have to do for your homework where there'll be full expansions, but I'm not going to give you too many of those because they're a lot of work. What I'm going to do is rather than do the full expansion, I'm just going to do the first three terms. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to show you how to use the formula, but I don't have to do eight of them, which takes a long time. Okay, and yet you still understand how the formula works. Okay, so we're going to do the first three terms. So the first term is going to be 7 choose 0. The second term is going to be 7 choose 1. The third term is going to be 7 choose 2. And then we're just going to go plus dot dot dot, realizing that there's a whole bunch of it that we could also do if we wanted to do the, expand, the full expansion, but it would be a lot of work. Okay, and then again, we're, we're trying to get the basics of all of this and start to see the patterns rather than just slugging it out. There's lots of examples in your textbook that show you how to do it, as well as the example that I just showed you for the 2x minus y to the power of 6. Okay, so go back and have a look at that again if you're still not understanding it. If you're not too good with algebra, go slowly, okay? Make sure you write down every single step like I'm doing, okay? Remember that what we do then, okay, so we've got all the chooses, which is easy, okay? But then what we do after that is we go bracket, and that's going to be the first guy raised to the power of 7. Then it's going to be the, the first guy raised to the power of 6, and the first guy raised to the power of 5, and then 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 and 0. But we're only doing the first 3. Okay, so then I go 1 over 3 to the x, 1 over 3 with an x, 1 over 3 with an x. Okay, then I do the second piece, and that's going to be this guy 
Okay, that's gonna be the second term in the binomial. Okay, and I'm gonna raise that to the power of zero, and then go up one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to seven. Okay, and that's gonna be two over five y, two over five y, two over five y. And that's how you do the expansion. It's kind of like filling in, substituting in over and over and over again. So there's no real excuse why you'll have difficulty doing the first substitution step. After that, if you take your time and go in baby steps, even if we weren't too good with algebra and this is a little bit scary to you, take your time, you're gonna be okay. Start and go simple. First of all, baby steps. What's seven choose zero? Well, that's easy, that's just one. What seven choose one? Seven. What seven choose two? Seven times six divided by two is 21. Okay? Then I wanna do this thing. Now I know it's really, really intimidating. Okay, but remember, everything gets raised to the power of zero. The one gets raised to the power of zero. Or sorry, raised to the power of seven. One gets raised to the power of seven. So one to the seven is one. Three to the seven, you're gonna to have to do that in your calculator. Three, unless you know it off the top of your head. Most people don't. 2,187. So 2187, that's the bottom. You know, the bottom gets to the power of seven, the top gets to the power of seven. Okay, and finally, oops, I forgot the x. And then finally we have the x. That also gets raised to power of seven. For the two over five y, the two gets raised to the power of zero, that's one. The five gets raised to the power of zero, that's one. The y gets raised to the power of zero, and that's just one. Okay, so that's a little easy for us to do. All right, again, we figured out that term. We go in baby steps. Let's go to the next one. Let's do the difficult one. One to the power of six is one. Three to the power of six is gonna be three, one of the x, six, seven, 29. And then x to the power of six is x to the six, okay? For this one, it's not gonna be too crazy. Two to the power of one, two. Five to the power of one, that's a, that's a one. 5 to the power of 1 is 5. y to the power of 1 is just y, or you could make it y to the 1 if you wanted to. Okay, but proper form at the end would mean that you'd have to turn that into just y. Okay, and then on to the next term. Taking your time, going slowly. 1 to the power of 5 is 1. 3 to the power of 5 is... Hmm, 243. I remember that one. X to the power of 5 is X to the power of 5. But use your calculator. Take your time. Go easy with it. You don't have to be a hero. Okay? 2 over 5, Y, and then I'm going to square that. So 2 squared, 4. 5 squared, 25. Y squared, Y squared. Plus dot, dot, dot. Don't forget the plus dot, 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 because it means you realize that there's still more to it. Okay? Now we're just going to crunch out the numbers. Remember that it works when you're multiplying numbers, that all the numerators are multiplied together and all the denominators are multiplied together all the way across. So one times one times one. That's a one in the numerator. Nothing down here, 2187. Nothing down here, 2187. Simple. And then we have x to the seven and there's no y term, so it's x to the seven. Okay, next term. Seven times one times two is 14. And then 729 times 5. So that's, uh, let's use a calculator. Why be a hero? 729 times 5 equals 3645. And then it's x to the power of 6, and then y just to the power of 1, or y. Okay? For our third term, 21 times 1 times 4. 21 times 1 is 21, times 4 is 84. So that's 84 on the top or in the numerator. And 243 times 25. 243 times 25, don't know that one. 6075. X to the 5, Y squared, plus dot, dot, dot. And that's where the rest of the expansion would be. Now, if you followed along with how we did that, you can always rewind, go back, and see what I did in each individual step. You realize it's not too difficult to do, even with fractions. Okay, there are some examples in your textbook that have negatives in them and stuff like that. So I've pared down the homework assignment a little bit from this. Okay, so you'll have to look in your description for your Google Classroom if you're online learning. If you're not online learning, then we're going to do all this, and we're going to slug our way through it. Okay, let's go back and look at some patterns again. Seven, it's a seven, so seven choose zero, seven choose one, seven choose two. 
This is a seven. These guys add up to a seven. These guys add up to seven. These guys add up to seven. They don't necessarily do it at the end, but they definitely do it at the beginning. And then the first term goes from biggest to seven to six to five. And the second term goes from zero to one to two. Okay? And then we just have multiplication. It's a lot of work, I know. It's difficult. Okay? But that's all right. All right. Now in this one. We want to write the third term in the expansion. So this is even less work to do, but it's more thinking to do. So the third term, okay, well, if you want to count it out, this is a 12. So the first term is going to be 12 choose 0, right? The second term is going to be 12 choose 1. The third term is going to be 12 choose 2. So this is the third term that we want to do. So 12 choose 2. Then I've got this guy, and I've got this guy. Okay, so the first term, the a is 2x squared. The big question is, what is the power of this going to be? More importantly, the second term is going to be 1 over 3b. What is the power of this going to be? We know a couple of things. We know that these two guys added together are going to equal 12. They always do. We also notice that if we look at the power of this one, okay, it's always going to start up at 12, so it'll be to the power of 12 here, then it'll be the power of 11 here, and then it'll be the power of 10 here. So I can make that a 10. The other one that's actually really easy to do is, whatever this number is, is the power on this guy. I don't know if you've noticed that. See how this is 0 and 0, and this is 1, and that's a 1, and this is a 2, and that's a 2. Okay, uh, And even in the other expansions, you can look at those two, and you'll see that pattern. So this is a 2, so this is going to be a 2. And that's how you can jump to a specific term. You start with the choose that corresponds to it, and that's what I did. I got the right choose. Then I realized that this 2 is the same as this 2, and these two guys have to add to 12, so that has to be a 10. Or if I count 12, 11, 10, then I know, hey, okay, that's going to be 10. If that's a 10, then that has to be a 2, because the two of them have to add up to 12. And now when I do this expansion, I'm just going to get this junk out of the way so I can do my algebra. That's sort of my rough work, right, that I'm doing in my head or off on a scrap piece of paper. Okay, then I go and I simply do the expansion. 12 choose 2, use your calculator. Okay, I think that's 66, it is. 66. 2 to the power of 10. Uh, I believe that's 1,024. And then x squared to the power of 10. Now, hopefully you remember what to do with an exponent raised to an exp uh, sorry a, uh, an exponent raised to a power is you multiply those two guys so that becomes x to the 20 okay because it's x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared 10 times you have to add all those twos together and you get 20 okay here it's a little bit simpler we've got a negative squared so that's going to be a positive we've got a 1 squared which is going to be a 1 we've got a 3 squared which is going to be a 9 we've got a b squared which is a b squared and we've just about got all of it now. 66 times 1,024. Okay, it's a big one. Okay, 6, 7, 5, 8, 4. All over 9. And then x to the 20. And then b squared. Now technically, uh, this term, as well as this term right here, could actually be reduced or written in lowest terms. And you should be able to write it in lowest terms. Okay, so try and reduce it as much as you can, this fraction. And what, in actual fact, what you'll find out is that um, this can be divided by 3 and this can be divided by 3. So if I divide the top by 3, I get 2, 2, 5, 2, 8. And divided by bottom by 3, I get it over a 3. And then I got x to the 20, b squared. But to be honest, if you get to this point, I'm ecstatic. Okay, reducing, writing in lowest terms, you may lose a half mark and you'll lose, or a mark on your form for a particular test question, but you're going to be doing assignments uh, if you're online learning, so you're going to find that pretty easy for you to do, and you'll have lots of time to check it over. You can even look at a uh, calculator that has a reducing function for you if you want to. Okay, so for this last one, it's kind of like this one here, except I'm looking for the middle term. Now the middle term is a little tougher to see. Again, this is to the power of 14, so I'm going to go 14, choose 0, 14, choose 1, 14, choose 2, 14, choose 3, 14, choose 4, 14, choose 5, 14, choose 6, 14, choose 7, and all the way down to 14, 
oops, 14, choose 14. And what you'll find out is the center term is this. Now I'll give you a little trick. The middle term is always, you know, the 14 cut in half is seven. So for any middle term, let's say this was a 12, the middle term would be 12, choose six. If this was a, uh, a 13, there wouldn't be a middle term. Because you can't go 13, choose 6.5. You can't do that. It's either 13, choose 6 or 13, choose 7. And so there is no middle term. Just like in a median, remember when we did a median way back when, sometimes we could have an actual middle value and sometimes it would be between two values. So if I'm looking for a middle term here, this has to be even. And the middle term is just 14, choose 7. Now, that's the key. If you can find the choose, then you can do the two parts of the expansion. You know that this corresponds to this and that these two guys have to add up to 14, so this also needs to be a seven, because seven plus seven is 14. So going by those patterns, then you take the first term, which is a two x, not too crazy, and you take the second term, which is a negative three x squared, and you go ahead and you raise them to the power of seven. Now the numbers are gonna be kind of big, so you go 14, choose seven, and that's 34, 32, 2 to the 7 is 128, and that's going to be x to the 7. Negative 3 to the 7, well, it's going to be a negative. 3 to the 7 is 3. I know I've done it already once today, but 2187. So negative to the 7 is a negative. 3 to the 7 is 2187. x squared to the 7, remember we multiply those. x to the 14. Then we, now there's no fractions here, so we don't have to worry about any reducing. So we take that number times that number times that number. So 3, 4, 3, 2 times 128 times uh, uh, negative 2, 1, 8, 7 equals, and we get a negative monster. Okay, a negative 9, 6, 0, 7, 4, 0, 3, 5, 2. Hopefully I didn't miss any digits. And now the x is, you've got x to the 7 and x to the 14. What do you do with those two? Well, those ones you add the exponents. It's not a power raised to a, uh, sorry, an exponent raised to a power. It's a, an exponent times an exponent with the same base. So you get x to the 21. And there is your final term. Now, if you want to look at a beautiful version of all this spelled out for you, you've got it in your notes. Don't forget to print out those notes and follow along as we go along or even print out some blank notes. I also attach those and then you can follow along with us and then check it over with your work. Okay, there's your homework. That is going to be from the old textbook no matter what. Okay, so when you go to search for that in the old textbook, okay, it's going to be page 293. All right, have a good one.